Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're in a powerful series, and I know this message today is going to bless you in a rich way. So get ready. God has a great plan for your life. Check it out. Hi, and welcome. Katrina Watkins here. You're back with another powerful message with First Lutheran Church. Do me a favor. If you're joining us live on Facebook, like and share this message so that your friends and family can be blessed by today's message all week long. Today is the Congregational Potluck. We are using this as an opportunity to show love and bless the Bacchus family. With the addition of over 30 new babies at Balcoast Children's Village and their travel and medical expenses, please consider giving a special love offering to them. Join us for lunch and learn all about their mission at Balcoast Children's Village. We'll see you there. It's Samaritan's Shoe Giveaway time. Mark your calendar for Saturday, August 10th. This is an amazing annual event at the Farmer's Market where we can give away new athletic shoes to 500 children and teens. We also wash their feet and have a chance to share Jesus' love with the families. We have a sign-up sheet that's out front today. Women's Evening Bible Study returns July the 22nd. We are coming together for a six-week series called Crossing the Waters. You can check this Bible study out at Right Now Media. All women are invited to join us. It's at 6 p.m. in the Northix. Bring your Bibles. We are watching The Chosen. This week on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m., we will be watching Season 4, Episode 6. If you missed Season 4, Episode 5, contact myself and I'll get you connected so that way you can catch up on this season. It's getting better and better. Our first word newsletter has been mailed out this week and you can also catch a copy out in the front of the church. If you want to find out all things going on here at First Lutheran, follow us on all of our social media platforms. If you're visiting or if you're a member, we have our connect cards. Let us know, request anything you'd like blessings, prayers, or maybe you'd like to join. Maybe you want to get baptized. We'd love to know. It looks like it's time for church to get started. Pastor John, you know what to do. I know what to do. All right, we got Jerry and Valerie and little Tommy here, so I'm going to invite them up. And uh, they're just going to share a little bit, and they'll be talking more uh, at the luncheon after the service. So come on up. All right. Tommy's asleep, so we're not going to pick him up. But all of you that's coming for lunch in here in just a little bit, you'll be able to see him then. So first, thank all of you for your love, for your support, and your prayers. The last time we were here, we told you or shared that we probably were in the process of getting 33 babies. Well, we did get all 33. <laughs> but it was a challenge because all, th all 33 of them were approximately two years and younger, and 10 of them were just six months and younger. And then just in the last seven days, we received four more babies, and one of them was, was abandoned, ha still had the placenta attached. And, so, and then one of them is only three days old, and all of them were just le what, three weeks or less, just in the last seven days, because the word's been out that we're willing to take care of just babies. We were told we we're expecting a lot more babies. So we really appreciate your prayers and helping us. So I think we have 129 children now. So in the last service, <laughs> well, hey, it's a challenge for 129. We have about 20 someone. How many teenagers do we have? <laughs> we have about 25 or maybe 30 teenagers, boys and girls. And I'm sure all of you know about teenagers. So it's a challenge just for the teenagers plus everything else that the Lord's given us responsible for. So how many of you have passports? Raise your hand if you have passports. How many of you are going to come and see us? Okay. Now remember, you'll be judged by every idle word you speak. Okay. I should have said that before you raised your hand. But please come and visit us and spend some time with us. You'll never be the same again if you come and visit us and spend some time with us. So I'm going to ask Valerie to share about the miracle on, on baby Tommy. Well, in the word it says, Suffer the little children to come unto me, 
because he loves babies, such as the kingdom of heaven, isn't it? So the 33 little babies that we got just brought us a little closer to heaven, and we're so grateful for every last one of them. Speaking of miracles, before I get to little Tommy, if I can just be spared two more minutes to talk about one miracle that we experienced with one of our own children, because we experience miracles every day. Tommy is just a tangible one that you can see, but we experience miracles at the village all the time. Here is one in particular that will probably strike your heart. She's 15 years old. Her name is Adela. She's in the ninth grade. And one morning she wakes up with a sore throat. It was hard to swallow. And as the days went by, she thought it was just a cold, but it got worse and she couldn't swallow her food. And she started having pain, a lot of pain. And with that pain came a lot of swelling in her neck. And when we evaluated her, when she went to get an MRI, she, they saw that she had a mass on her thyroid. She's only 15. The original evaluation said that she would need surgery to remove the whole thyroid, that she had goiter. Well, it's hard to understand with my background, I'm a, I'm a medical professional, I'm a nurse practitioner, that a 15-year-old would be hit with goiter so young and would need to remove the thyroid, which is responsible for your entire metabolism and your growth and development. We didn't really accept that di prognosis and diagnosis for a 15-year-old. Every child at the village is precious. They're like my own baby. And so, of course, I wanted a second opinion. If you're going to do that major surgery, I need more than one opinion. So we sent her to uh, a more uh, advanced, technologically advanced in the health field, uh, five hours away from us. And with that, we sent her with a prayer. She went to stay for the meantime with one of our administrator's family whose, whose husband was a minister as well. And so we started to pray for her. The MRI did confirm the original findings of a mass on her thyroid. And it was really growing into the soft tissues that were surrounding into her esophagus and trachea, making it difficult for her to swallow and sometimes breathe. She always thought she had a cold and couldn't understand. Well, you can imagine the anxiety that a 15-year-old would have to go under surgery at so young. We started to pray for her. And after just less than one week, she woke up, and she woke up to feel her throat, and nothing was there. It was gone. Yeah. God is good. God continues to work miracles for all of his children and for all of you. And I just wanted to assure you that if God can hear our prayers, I know he hears yours as well. And because he's heard yours for Tommy, I wanted to give you the update of what he's been doing for Tommy. Tommy has had two surgeries so far for his retinal detachments. For those of us who haven't heard what retinas are like, they're very, very delicate parts of the eye that takes in light and vision and sends the information to the brain through the optic nerve that's located at the back of the eye. Well, this tissue is so very delicate. It's like wet tissue paper. And if you handle that too roughly, you don't even have to handle it roughly. It can tear. For anybody who hasn't had retinal detachment, you know that your vision is gone. And unfortunately for little baby Tommy, who was born at 28 weeks, his retinas were not fully developed, were they, nor were they attached. So he's had two surgeries so far, but before he even had surgery, he had seizures. He had seizures because he was bleeding in the brain as well. And so we had to give him medications for that. He was on so many different medications. We had to take his blood pressure. He had hypertension. For a baby that should have blood pressures 90, in the 90s, the top number, 40s and 50s, the lower number, he was 140 over 90, which American Heart Association already says. That's hypertension for the adult. Can you imagine a little baby? Then he had to take medications that would bring the sugar up, so we'd have to be very careful about the sugars. Then he had to have to take medications to coat his stomach, because those medications irritated the stomach, and on and on and on and on and on. Well, with your prayers and the last time that we met, and we prayed so fervently for him, he is now off of his seizure medications, where he was having over 100 seizures a day. He is now seizure-free. 
no medications. In addition to that, he was getting medications for the glaucoma. The pressures in the eye were building up, and he is now off of the glaucoma medications as well. The second surgery, after the second surgery, the third surgery he was scheduled for in May was to continue pushing back the retina toward the wall of the eye so that it can attach itself as he grows. Well, when the doctor went to evaluate him for the third surgery, they found that he had already reattached 20%. So that's a wonderful, wonderful news. In one eye, however, he does have thickened uh, cornea, and in the future, he will need corneal transplant. However, he is very light sensitive there. In addition to that, I wanted to just let you know that Tommy is growing healthy. He's doing very well. And I wanted to, all the children are doing well. We are doing well, and we wanted to stop by. You know, it's like, you don't leave your home unless, with your phone unless you know it's charged. You always have a charger. And some of us take our batteries with us just in case the power runs out, right? Because what would we do without a cell phone? That's what I've heard as someone. What would we do without a cell phone? We always have to keep it connected to the source, though, to get that charge. Well, that's what we feel when we come here. We come here to get our charge back on so that we can keep going, get the power flowing through us. Thank you, Pastor John and Karen, for your hospitality. Karen is Tommy's best friend when we're here. They talk together as if there's no one else around, and I'm so happy and grateful for such wonderful love, such an extension of the family. We just wanted to say thanks again. Yes. Well, let me pray for you guys. We're going to pray. All of you know are familiar with James 127, right? Pure religion is helping the widows and the orphans. When you help us, you are directly helping the widows and orphans. Thank you so very much for your support and your prayers. All right. Well, let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the miracles of what you do. You're always working. You're always showing forth your glory. We just want the eyes to see it and be a part of it as you invite us to pray. To lift you up, Lord Jesus, in the midst of every situation so that you are invited to come in. Because that's the way you've chosen to work. And we've been praying. We've been trusting. We've been believing for little Tommy. And we stand in awe of what you've done so far. We know that also by this you give us testimonies to testify to your greatness and goodness. Just as Valerie has been doing. It's given you honor and glory in this house. But also a reminder that what you do for one, you do for all. Because you want to bless everyone and draw us all closer to you. So use this to your glory. As not of as you bless Falcos, as you bless us, as you use us as light and salt in this world, that we testify, that we trust, we pray, we invite you in to every situation. And that you are given the glory and the honor and the praise. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. They'll have more pictures and everything else up to the luncheon. You, if you want to give a donation, you can leave one with the elders after the service or bring it upstairs and, or put it in later. Just make checks out to First Lutheran. We'll make sure it gets to, to them in the way that is easy for everybody. Let's stand. Come on. Who's ready to sing? Who's ready to praise God for all these testimonies of his greatness and goodness? So, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the day that you have made for us to be together as your family, for us to come together and to praise and honor you. So be pleased to bless us in this time as you draw us closer, as you bring healing and wholeness and fullness of life, that we overflow uh, with your presence and your spirit as we live to make you known. So have your way, especially in these days where so many people need you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Opening song, Days of Elijah. These are the days of Elijah.
day. It is the day to give you all praise and honor and glory. For you live and you reign now and forever. And so we have come here to humble ourselves. For we are in your presence now. And so we seek your face. And we rejoice in your salvation. Oh, Jesus, our ever-present Savior, come quickly. Oh, how that you would come on the clouds to restore everything that is broken. And that is our prayer for today. So speak your word of love over us, that hope that we need. Wherever we find ourselves broken today, we ask for your healing, your presence in our lives. Speak to us, Jesus. We are listening. In your name we pray. Amen.
You know, as pastors, they were singing this. And I was thinking about bringing it to the altar, everything, whatever sin it may be, whatever brokenness it may be. I used this illustration in the first other two services that sin is like this cup, cup of water. This cup right here is very light, actually. But the longer I hold it, the longer I carry it along with me, it's going to get heavy. And that's the way sin is, man. Brokenness, guilt, all this stuff. And when we don't deal with it, it gets heavy. That's why this song says, bring it to the altar. See, when I was in my mess, the sin was heavy. It started out fun. You know, sin appears to be fun to us, but we know the wages of sin is death. And that's what it pays off. That's the payment of it. But the enemy tricks us and think it's fun until it gets so heavy to where we can't carry it. And before we get that way, that's why he invites us to give it to him. And that's what I decided to do. And that's the invitation today. It's come to the altar, the cup that you have, that's heavy. It may be light right now, but sooner or later it'll get heavy. And the wages of it is death. But by the, while the blood is running warm in your veins, we have the opportunity to give it to Jesus. So I took the cup that I had and I took it to Jesus. Because the scripture says in Philippians, it's for us to work out our own salvation. It's for us to do. He's there with his arms open wide with love saying, come to the altar, give it to me. Whatever it is today that we may be dealing with, leave it at the altar and watch God show up and show out in our lives. We shared this morning with our um, teenagers how awesome God is that he's saying today, yesterday, today, and forevermore. That he's just that awesome. That he love us so much. That he sent his son to die for us. No matter what it is, his blood covers it. So we get this opportunity to give it to him today. Amen? Amen. Let us bow our heads and let us give it to the Lord today. Amen? Dear Lord Jesus, we just come before you, Father. We come before your throne of grace, Father. We just cast all our burdens, all our sins, all our brokenness, guilt, shame. We cast it at, at the cross, at the foot of the cross, Lord. For it's too heavy for us to carry, not meant for us to carry. For it's your weight, Father, so we give it to you. So, Father, do a work on us. Create in us that clean heart. Renew the right spirit in us, Father. For we want to be more like you, Father. For this flesh, it strives after the things of this world. So help us crucify it every day through your Holy Spirit. So we will walk worthy to your calling, Father. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, that even when we are out of line, Father, your grace is there for us. It's begging us to get back in line with you. So Father, we just bless your name on this morning as we go higher in your service, as we cast our burdens before you, Father. Let us leave them there and never to pick them up again.
to turn and make that 180 in our life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you can believe. Listen, God heard you. And guess what? He comes through. He's not like us. He comes through and he forgives. There's nothing over our heads. We are free and we are redeemed. Amen. At this time, the kids are excused for Treehouse Kids Church. Back this way with Miss Karen. Let's pray for our little ones. Eternal God, we just thank you for each and every one of our little ones. Continue to watch out after them and bless them in the mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints said, amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> Harbor. Our scripture lessons today are from, our, see, our first lesson today is from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. <clears throat> the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 6 and 11. Therefore... There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. This too is the word of the Lord. So he's saying get your mind right in the spirit, not in the flesh. Romans 8, powerful, powerful words. I invite you to rise as we hear our gospel reading today from Mark chapter 6. King Herod heard about this, what Jesus was doing, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, he is Elijah. Still others claimed he is a prophet like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod itself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, It is unlawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. It was his birthday. Herod gave a banquet for his high officials, the military commanders, and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, Whatever you ask, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request, I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. 
the king was greatly distressed. But because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing this, John's disciples came, took his body, and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of our Lord. At this time, we invite to bring up your Connect cards, a worship offering if you brought one, and we're going to sing a song to prepare us for today's message, a familiar hymn, Just As I Am.
So Lord Jesus, Lamb of God, we come. We come humbly. We come grateful. We come desperate for what you give. So speak. Do what you do. In your name, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, today's going to be extra good. I'm going to tell you why. We're in a series called Go Time. We're on the go. We've got a mission. we got to bring Jesus to people and all these things. And today we're going to talk about this. It's time to deal with sin. And here's the good part. You get to get a bonus. How many of you like a bonus? Nobody likes a bonus? Come on. It means there's something regular, but there's something added on too. This message isn't necessarily for you in your life. I'm assuming you know how to deal with sin, but I want you to be aware of what people are dealing with because that's exactly what they're dealing with in their life. When we go, the real issue is sin. And that's what the gospel is all about. It's what God's way of dealing with sin. It's through Jesus. It's through the cross. It's through the blood that he shed as he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And it's the only way that works. And that's why we're talking about it today in this Go Time series. Everyone we go to is dealing with sin. It's what we need to see and understand if we're going to be effective in sharing the gospel with those who need it. We are sent to help people deal with their sin. And so the first thing we all need to know about sin is this. It's kind of a really tough one, so get ready. It's number one, sin is bad. It really is. Sin is bad. It's never been good. It's always bad. It's what ruins lives, ruins relationships, health, finances, destinies. It can ruin ministries, and it ruins spiritual life with God now and forever. The wages of sin is death. The soul that sins is the one that shall die. God warned Adam not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because on the day you eat of it, what would happen? You would surely die. On that day, they did. They became mortal. And their sin brought death to everything else. It all kind of died. You see, that's why sin is serious business. It's always been serious, and it always will be. It will always bring death to everything, to everything that God intends to be good for us. And this is huge, because we live in a culture where sin is not seen as serious. We live in a culture where sin is not only tolerated, we put up with it, but actually we now live in a culture where sin is celebrated. Sin is paraded around in front of us. Sin is flaunted. If you've ever watched a Super Bowl halftime show, that's what's going on. Commercials, TV shows, it's being pushed in our face to accept it as no big deal. But it is. It's bad. It kills. It robs. It steals. It destroys. It ruins everything. So that's number one. Number two is this. Sin must be dealt with. It doesn't just go away. That's what a lot of people would like to happen. Why can't it just go away? Why can't we just sweep it under a rug? Why can't it just evaporate? Sin must be dealt with. It's why God came to Adam and Eve in the garden after they sinned. Why? He came to deal with their sin. 
And what I want you to notice about it is that Adam and Eve first tried to deal with their sin themselves. First thing they did is this. They tried to hide their sin as they went and hid. They hid from God. They, they lived in the dark where no one can see them, they thought. And then they tried to cover their sin and their shame. They sewed fig leaves together. And the more I read that, the more I want to chuckle. Get this picture. Okay. You take a fig leaf off a tree and you, you make it into a garment. How long is that going to last before it dries up and crinkles up and falls off? It shows the foolishness of what we try to do in covering our sin. I will get to and this is what people try to do. Again, I'm, I'm trying to help you to see what people are trying to do. They, they hide in the dark. They try to cover their sin. See, God had to make permanent clothing out of animal skin. There was a sacrifice. Death had to come that could cover them for a while. But it was all about the promise of the Lamb of God who would be slain. It was about the promised seed who would crush Satan's head even while Satan bruised his heel. See, God was going to deal with sin, and he was giving them that promise. But this is what they did. They tried to deal with their own sin. It's what people tried to do. That's what you need to know about their life, is they're all trying to deal with sin. Some people do. They just keep their sin covered. It's way in the past. So no one will find out about it. I just try to hide my sin. And the other thing people do is they try to cover their sin with good works, which is, is this thing. Look at this. Don't look at this. Look at this. Look how good I am. I do good things. But good works will never cover sin. Never has, never will. We can't pay for our sins. So that's what they tried to do. Second thing they did is they made excuses and then blamed other people. Does that sound familiar? It's not my fault. God, it's your fault. I didn't ask for this woman. <laughs> right? God says it's not good for you to be alone. It's not my fault. This woman you gave me, she gave me and I ate. It's really her fault. Blame her. Eve said, not my fault. If this serpent would have been here, I never would have noticed that tree and how good it looked and how I could be God and do my own thing. See, to deal with sin, people always try to do it themselves, and it never works. Hiding, covering, making excuses, Blaming other people. If they wouldn't have said that, I wouldn't have done that. So it's really not my fault, God. But he holds us accountable for our own sin. I tell our guys on Saturday morning, if I don't have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, it's not your fault. It's not because you made me mad that I lost the Spirit of God and kicked him out so I could be angry with you and say whatever I want to say. Say, he's given me everything I need to deal with sin and to live in righteousness through the Spirit. So that's what they did. And then there's Cain. Cain lied about his sin and denied it when he was confronted with it. It's kind of like this Who ate all the cookies? I don't know. Just lying. Denying that it was really me. Think about it. God tried to help him. That's what I love about the story. God is so good. He warned Cain ahead of time about his jealousy about with his brother because he offered the right kind of sacrifice. If you do it right, it's going to be okay with you. Deal with your own stuff. And he told him, sin is crouching at the door. 
watch out. And his desire is to have you and bring ruin and destruction and everything to your life. But Cain wouldn't listen. He killed his brother, then pretended like it never happened. And so when God came and confronts Cain and asked, where's your brother Abel? Cain's response, I don't know what you're talking about. Am I my brother's keeper? Is that my job to keep track on my brother? I'm denying it. But here's the thing. God knew. He always knows. The blood cried out to him. He knows what goes on all the time. He's omniscient, all-knowing, present everywhere. It's who he is. You see, we can't ever get away with it because he knows. Again, that's where people, they, they need to know this, that they're, they're running, they're hiding, they're lying, they're deceiving, they're covering. All this stuff that they want to do instead of deal with their sin will never work. So Cain, there's a Bible passage, Numbers 32 says, surely your sin will find you out. You ever notice that? I thought I buried it really deep in the ground. I thought I hid it really well. I thought I denied it so strong that everyone believed me, and then all of a sudden, out it comes. And then Proverbs 28, 13 says this, whoever conceals or covers his sin will not prosper. Here's why. Because there's now a wall between me and God. There is no prosperity when things are not right. But, he says, whoever confesses, whoever says the same thing God says, I was wrong, I sinned. That's what God says. I was wrong and I confess it. I renounce it, which means I turn from it. I don't want that in my life. They're the ones who will find mercy. You see, if we say we have not sinned, we make God out to be a liar. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins, cleanse us, he, we will find mercy. So sin is bad. Sin must be dealt with. Number three, Sin must be dealt with God's way, not our way. People's ways will not work. It never will. It needs to be God's way. See, that's why John the Baptist came. He came to prepare the way for Jesus so that people could come clean and receive him. That's why he came. He came to prepare the way that people get ready to come clean. He came preaching a baptism of repentance to confess their sins and be baptized, to be forgiven, to be made clean so that they could receive the one who deals with all sin. He came so that mountains may come down, valleys may come up, crooked places straight and rough places smooth. I mean, everything that's in the way of being honest and open in front of Jesus to receive him has to go. And that's what he came to do. And the amazing thing is that John the Baptist even went to King Herod, who was bad. He had a lot of sin, and sin is bad, and so it was affecting his life. And yet God wanted him to. See, he wants everyone. And you'll come to people, and you'll wonder, does God really want them? The answer is yes just like he wanted me, just like he wants you. And they're trying to deal with sin in all the wrong ways. I'll just drink a lot so I can pretend like it doesn't exist. I'll tell all kinds of lies, and when somebody catches me, I'll tell some more lies. I'll deny it and do all these other things. Those ways will never work, and we're here to help people deal with their sin in God's way so that Jesus might enter in. This is what, here is what I want you to see in Mark chapter 6. Herod was open to what John the Baptist was saying, and yet he was struggling inside. 
He feared John, protected him. Knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, he was puzzled by John, yet he liked to listen to him. He wanted John around because deep down inside, the spirit was stirring within him. He was intrigued by what was going on, that there maybe was something there. And this is what you'll find, that there'll be people who you think aren't really interested. They really are. They're open. They're just struggling on the inside. How does this work? How do I deal with us? What do I do? And our job is to get them to Jesus and to do it the way they need to hear it. See, sometimes we think we get to say whatever we want and they shut the door, they block it out, they'll go to deny because it's not safe. That's why it takes time to walk with them, to love them, to listen, to ask questions and watch what God is doing and bring it in. This is what God has done for you. And it's yours. And you can have it just like I got it. It's a gift. And it works. And you'll have peace. And you'll have joy. And you'll have freedom. And you'll experience life. And everything will get fixed. He had an open door. But Herod was, wasn't quite there. And he made a public promise. And once he made that promise, and Salome, Herodias' daughter, danced for him, and he promised this promise up to half his kingdom. When she asked for the head of John the Baptist, he caved because he was afraid of what people will say or think. Peer pressure. You see, that's what people are dealing with. What will people think? That's why, see, John would come to Herod, it seems, by himself. He wasn't always talking out in front of everybody because he liked to listen to them. But when you understand that, you find a way so they can hear and receive. So the peer pressure. Herodias, his wife, his brother's wife, who he took, wanted to deal with sin this way. Let's just get rid of the one who's accusing me. Let's get rid of John the Baptist. But you see, John the Baptist was a gift of God for them. See, a friend will tell you what you need to know. Someone who really cares will speak and help people to get free. That's what John was doing for Herod coming as a friend so he could get free. She thought that would take care of sin, but it wouldn't. That's why number four is so important. Sin is and has been dealt with once and for all at the cross. Through the blood that was shed and is found in Jesus Christ and him alone. And we got it. And we live in it. And we can share it. And we can help people find that truth and experience the wonderful truth of what you get in Jesus. He deals with sin once and for all, and it's done. Because at the cross, he said, it is finished. It's all paid for. Don't waste it. It's there. Come to the altar. His arms are open wide. Just as I am, come. Yeah. I come to receive. That's why Paul can write, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no more condemnation. In Christ Jesus, we live forgiven and made whole. And he says it this way. For what the law was powerless to do. You've got to understand this. The law is rules and regulations. And that's how some people want to deal with people. If I just do this enough and tell them how bad they are, and you better straighten up, the law has no power. Only the gospel has power. That's why we've got to get people to that point. If they don't know sin is serious business, we have to help them to understand why sin is serious business. 
why lying won't work, why covering it up won't work, what it does to relationships, what it does to people's witness. But Jesus is the answer. What the law was powerless to do, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering so that he might condemn sin in his flesh for us. See, that's why sin must be dealt with. It must be condemned. And it was. Jesus says, I'll take it. I'll be condemned. I will bear the punishment of all sin of all time once and for all. That's how sin is dealt with. And that's why as we go, we go to get people to Jesus. Does that make sense? That's really all it is. We don't fix anybody. He does. The gospel works on the inside, and it changes people on the inside. So as I go and share the good news of Jesus, I can help people deal with the guilt of their sin. You see, guilt has to do with what I have done in the past. And a lot of people are living in the past, allowing the past to affect their life. They're weighed down. They're depressed. They're discouraged because of guilt. I did something wrong, and it keeps haunting me. And I try to cover it. I try to medicate it. I try to do all these things. But Jesus says, let me come fix that. Just bring it to me. I will make you whole. That's why there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The guilt is gone. Freedom comes for the past and what's been done. Secondly, as I live to share the good news of Jesus, I can help people deal with the brokenness of their sin. That talks about what's broken in their life right now. It could be relationships. It could be destinies. Things they thought would happen, and they're living in a place of brokenness. And Jesus comes, and he can heal that and make things whole. He brings restoration. He brings reconciliation. He came to reconcile us to the Father and us to each other. That's so important of what he wants. That's how sin is dealt with in Jesus to make whole, healed, Delivered, set free. That's why I put in here the story of the prodigal son. Okay? He was broken. He was a mess. He was living far from God. And he was trying to deal with it his only way he knew how. I'm going to do it myself. And then he finally came to his senses. He says, you know, the only place that was good is at home. I guess I'll go home. I don't expect anything because of what I've done. He came humbly. And the father's there waiting with open arms to say, come. What happened when the son came? Bring the fatted calf. Put a robe on this guy. Get a ring on his finger. Put sandals on his feet. Everything is restored. There's no more brokenness in the relationship, in his position, in his future. Everything is made whole and perfect. And when I look at the prodigal son, I see the father as Jesus because he provides all of that through his life, death, and resurrection. You see, people who are broken need the one who can fix it. Sin breaks things, but he puts it all back together. And finally, as I live to share the good news of Jesus, I can help people deal with the fear of their sin. See, fear has to do with the future. So does stress and anxiety. It's about, oh, oh what, what if this happens? What if this happens? See, even what if people find out? If, what if these things, what about this? And Jesus says, I got that too. There is no fear. God's perfect love casts out fear. 
because he's with me. It's been dealt with, and I'm his, and he is mine. What I really wanted to get across today is this. When we go, all we need to do is bring Jesus. We invite him in. Why are you so sad? Where does that go? I know the one who can fix that, who can heal that. What about the future? Let's invite Jesus in. He'll make things right in the end. And you can live with perfect peace as your mind has stayed on him. You can have joy unspeakable as you're living in him. You can know that you are more than a conqueror. So I love about that phrase, more than a conqueror, that neither the present nor the future, because the past is already dealt with. But even present and the future, because nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And that's what we get to do. And it's really the greatest joy you and I could have in life is watch people come alive, get healed, get put back together, find joy, experience fullness of life because they got the one who makes it happen. His name is Jesus. What a life we get to live. Amen? Amen. Amen. We worship the Lord with our offering. Oh, no, we have our prayer. Where am I? Amen, amen. So, dealing with sin, that message, man, I have the saying that we're only as sick as our secrets. You know, the enemy, he like can have a playground with us when we have secrets. But when we confess those to Christ, it like sets, it sets us free. And God loved us so much, he didn't want us to live a life of brokenness, guilt, shame, and defeat. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, that we may get to enjoy life here, right here on earth. We say it all the time, your kingdom come, your will be done. He can do that in our lives once we deal with our sin and give it to him work out our own salvation not pointing the finger at the other person but look within ourselves to deal with it work out our own salvation and give it to Christ amen let us stand to our feet let us pray for the church because God is just so good you know uh pastor was talking about his love his love is just so great y'all hear me talk about his love all the time all the time I'm talking about how good his love is because I was in such turmoil on how he was out to get me I'm telling y'all I used to think God was so out to get me I did not know he loved me so much and so it might be somebody here today may feel the same way I don't care what it is you're going through the sin that you're dealing with give it to him he loved you right where you're at he already know. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we just thank you for the word on today, Father, that you have given us, Father, from on high to deal with our sin. For it's go time in this season. And anything that's weighing us down, it's time to let it go. Give it to you. Keep our eyes fixed on you. Not to look back to pick anything up, but look back to wish that we would, can go back but to keep our eyes fixed on you Jesus we thank you for what you're doing here at First Lutheran in the body of Christ as you continue to add to the body of Christ as you continue to lift us up through your word to keep on keeping on on, the Christian, on this Christian journey now Father we pray right now for those having birthdays and anniversaries Father we pray that your healing touch 
manifest in their lives, Father. But most importantly, Father, we pray that your will be done in their lives. We pray for all caregivers that are taking care of those as loved ones, Father. Pray for those that just need your healing touch. Those that's dealing with sin, for we all deal with sin. Help us, Lord. Help us along the way that we may spread this gospel and our living shall not be in vain. We pray for this world that we live in. We pray for our country. Pray for our leaders, Father. Those that have authority over us, Father. We just thank you that we are the light of the world. So help us to shine the light. Now, Father, we close out with a prayer that you taught us to pray, and that prayer is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'm back and I know where I am. We're going to say goodbye to those watching online. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. I pray that today's message bless you in a rich way. We're all about being committed to the mission, being committed to Jesus, being committed to this life in him. If we can be a blessing to you on this journey, give us a call. Our number is 501-525-0322. Or we'd have, love to have you join us on Sunday mornings live on our Facebook page. Our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. We come on 11 o'clock Central Time. So God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again soon.